Hi guys, welcome back to the retro room. I, what we have here is kind of an enigma. This board came to me as not working. Uh, I don't know if I had a video of it or not, but I had replaced all of these caps. Well, most of them. It's real nice. Has a bunch of Rubicons on it now. All these black, well, all of these and these guys. Supposed to be low ESR jobs, but it wasn't working before I did that. And after I replaced several, these little ones did not get replaced, but after I replaced the capacitors, it still did not work. But just a bit ago, I plugged the board in to a power supply, put a bit of memory on it. You know, there's a processor under here. Uh, and it Look, acted like it wanted to post. So I have a postcard here, which will let you guys see. Sorry about that noise. We got a got our bench power supply. Where is the there we go. We will plug him in. We don't need this ATX to AT adapter. This is an ATX motherboard. Standard 20 pin. It's like so. Uh, the processor has a four pin connection, which we'll plug in there. And power pins are these red dudes right here. I don't know if you can see that very well, but right there. And it's wanting to do stuff. Now let's shut him off. Close all these up. Let's turn him around. And we'll see if we got any video. Okay, we've got a little black box in the corner there. We're going to try this AGP card. Uh, I have no idea what you are. It says NVIDIA, so it's a G4 something or other. Model P117. I don't know. I'll let you guys take a look. He's not focusing. That's fun. Anyway, pop him down there. Uh, where is my video cable? That's not going to work. The card is DVI and my cable is VGA. Use a little adapter here. Now let's see what comes up on video. Got a memory test. 
Athlon XP 1800 Plus. I think that is a bit faster than that, but that's okay. It'll work for now. CMOS checksum error. Defaults loaded. Well, that's fun. Also makes for a rather boring video. I don't know what... I'd given up on this board. And now it has a loud fan. Plug in the keyboard. Works right away. We don't have any drives or anything connected. Uh, let's power him down. We'll get some drives on him and see if he actually boots. Well, I hope the onboard floppy controller works. We have floppy cable. The pink line on this cable or whatever other indicator your cable has for pin 1. This one has a pink line here. There's also an arrow on the connector. goes to pin 1 on the motherboard, which is outlined by this bolder line here on the board. This motherboard is a Gigabyte GA7N400 Revision 2, apparently. Uh, running in AMD Athlon XP, which you guys saw. We're going to use the GoTech. But we're also going to connect this other floppy drive. So there's a couple things I want to test outside of this board. If this board works for that, we'll just use this board to test it with. Uh, first, we're going, to, we're going to see if this thing will boot from a boot disk image. Plug in the USB. Then let's power him. Did I turn the power supply off? No, power supply was on. There we go. We'll go into setup. We'll have to tell it what floppy drives are here. Don't have a f a I don't know what three f three mode function is. I'll have to look into that. Uh Going to see if he boots. Well, that's problematic. just shorting the power button pins here to simulate pushing the power button 
On most ATX things, you can push the power button and hold it for four seconds and it will shut the machine down regardless of what it's doing. That's most things. That's not perfectly universal, but it's powering back on and Postcard is holding it 1D. 1 6. Doesn't look like a 6. How curious. And we just set up the CMOS for having two floppy drives and it decided not to boot anymore. All right, the little LED that's on the board, it lights up after it's been on, went off. We'll power him up again. Still holding at 1D. Oh, I was held on something. I was wondering why it wasn't wanting to turn off. Alright, if that's giving us trouble. We'll unplug the second floppy and we'll try it again. Oh, he's not doing anything. Still holding at that 1D. doesn't want to shut off. Well that's concerning. Let's take off the floppy cable from the board. powering back on. We'll see if, of course, there's no change. Well, we're not out of the woods yet. We're going to start with the simple things first. The video card is in question because mostly I don't quite know what it is. So let's disconnect him. There's a little pull tab at the back here. Of course, you guys can't see it with my hand in the way. All right, instead, I'm going to use this Asus guy. Of course, I'm not sure what is underneath there either. But that's okay. There's a look at that sticker for anybody playing along at home. I'm going to pop him in there. We don't need this. We don't need this adapter. I do need for this plug in there. Let's try with this 
other video card first. Come on, you. There it goes. He's doing something. Maybe it was just the video card. BIOS version F11, that's the most recent one on this board. Okay. Still in the spirit of getting this machine booted, we're going to plug in the floppy drive like so. We don't have the second floppy drive plugged in, and it's probably forgotten our setup. Yep, that just tells me the battery that's on this thing is dead. But it's right there. It's a little 2032. And I have a few of those handy. I'm just not going to change it right now. Not until we do something semi-serious with this machine. Okay. You guys can't see it doing it, but there we go. The GoTech is flashing. There's no I, there's no CD-ROM drive. There's just the floppy drive on this machine, in fact. Seems like the problem with this with this board that we came across just then was this video card, which I I don't know what this is, or even when it was made. says top search TSM right here on the top I don't know the more I look at it it looks like some real late stage weirdness I'm gonna put him aside looks like he booted Yeah, not any trouble at all there. Well, shall we put a drive on here and see if he'll take an operating system? Yeah, I think so. Let's see what we can make this guy do. You know, I could be lazy. Just use one of these little 8 gig compact flash card. You know, plonk it into this IDE channel. Like so, and just call it a day. But in the spirit of making a period accurate total build, I have one of these. 
Western Digital WD-800, it's an 80 gig black cover IDE, it's set up as a single drive right now as you can tell from the from the diagram there uh, this should do just fine granted that the drive works move this memory aside we'll put him down we will need an IDE drive for him we're going to use this just to move some move some software from you know like install files and things Again, make sure pin one is matched up on all the things. I'm going to take this floppy drive off of this chain because for right now I'm not going to need him. And we'll plug in the hard drive. It shouldn't be too loud, that drive. Move the IDE cable out of the way. I heard the hard drive, but he was very silent, especially compared to this fan here. It already detected the drive. That's that's awesome. Okay. I I don't know if there's anything on that drive or not. It says up at the top, the drive is LBA mode ATA33, which I don't care. If I have a, if I have one of those 80-way ATA100 cables, I'll try that on him. Yes, no drives found. Invalid drive specification. Uh, does F disk work? Yeah, let's do that. NTFS partitions. Ten thousand megabytes. So listing the drive as a ten gig drive. Strange. Let's exit from that. Let's see. Let's see if it boots from the hard drive. Just shut off the video. Okay, let's try this again. Let's go into setup. Let's take a look. See what 
80 gigabytes it shows. It's not recognizing the compact flash because I don't have a compact flash connected to power right now. Even though he's connected to the board right here. Only thing it can do is boot from the hard drive. The USB is completely out of the GoTech. happening that is okay let's plug him back in Got a Windows 98 startup menu just by hitting F8 on the. I was hoping to avoid this IDE thing or this CD ROM driver. You know what? Let's power him down. No, no, no. Stay off. I'm going to plug in the compact flash. I'll power him back on with that noisy fan. I wonder if I have a Noctua fan that I would do better. Yeah, see, ATA 100. 8,070 megabytes. They recognized it. Okay. Figure while we're in here, we might as well do both drives. Interesting. There's already something on that drive on the on the compact flash. There's nothing there. We'll leave the compact flash the way it is. going to verify the drive which is going to take a minute at this screen now that it's verified the drive at this screen it wants me to use the maximum available size for the primary DOS partition and make that partition active now, if I were to answer this, it wouldn't tell me how big of a drive it's detected, thus how big that partition would be. In most cases, that's not a big deal because it would just automatically detect and 
you know, whatever size the drive is, in this case, 80 gigs. Uh, but in this situation, since it had a 10 gig drive as the primary drive, and it said it was 100% of the drive, we'll see how big it's, yeah, still 10 gig. I don't think we need to do this. I'm going to let this complete. But I'm going to get... Oh... Windows 2000, probably. To put on this... To put on this rig. Uh, Windows XP, I would love to put on this machine. But that might be a bit of a slog on this setup. Maybe not. We'll try Windows 2000 though. I've always like Windows 2000. All right. I've made quite a stack of drives here. Got our optical drive, hard drive, and then GoTech, which is simulating a floppy drive. I've taken the compact flash adapter off because if this board boots off of CD, we will boot from the Windows 2000 disk. We'll see if we can't see if we can't get that to happen. It found the CD drive you see there. Uh, first boot device CD ROM. Then that'll do. Maybe it'll boot from the drive. I hope it'll read that disk. I think that's a DVD R and I don't know if this drive will read DVDs. I guess not. He only just now mounted that disc. It reads it just fine. Fine, we'll go for... Cannot be running DOS mode. Fantastic. We'll see if it'll boot from the disc now that we know it's mounted. drive doing something. Okay, this guy just isn't doing anything. Well, let's soft power him down, like so. Setup won't run in DOS mode. And apparently it won't boot from the disk. 
That's a lot of fun. a CD. Um, stop. Let's take a look at this Windows 2000 disk I have. Pop him in the drive here. see anything that would make this bootable. Well, that's a lot of fun. Means we'll have to put some other operating system on there. You know, win, win 9x of some flavor to then move it to Windows 2000 with this disk. But I'm feeling awful lazy. Uh, let's see what we can't. Let's see what we can't come up with. Well, I had no CDs burned or otherwise that would work with this. I would boot from this system, but for a 1.5 gigahertz with one one gig of memory, let's try some of this. What? What are you trying to tell me? The hard drive's not set up. All right, I have an actual floppy drive hooked up because apparently Windows 2000 has a boot disk that it can boot the machine with. I suppose I could have made that image, but I moved the, I put the image on a floppy disk and then made a CD for the and it booted from the CD. Didn't need the boot disk to start. Didn't need the boot disk anyway. Well, here we are in Windows 2000 setup. I'm going to let it go through with all of this and we'll see how it runs on this system 
but I think this video might be going a bit long. What? When we come back, you know, in a part two of this video, we'll show that this, we'll put some drivers on, do some software tests and things on this machine. But I thank you for joining me on this video, and I hope you have a good day.